All right, so we just loosely defined what the zero trust model is. So let's talk about how we would do zero trust on AWS. And so zero trust has to do a lot with identity security controls. Uh, so let's talk about what is at our disposal on AWS. So on AWS, we have uh, identity and access management, IAM. This is where we create our users, our groups, our policies. So an IAM policy is a set of permissions that allow you to say, okay, this user is allowed to use uh, these services with these particular actions. Uh, then you have the concept of permission boundaries. And so these are saying, okay, um, these aren't the permissions the user has currently, but these are the boundaries to which we want them to have. So they should never have access to um, uh, ML services. And if someone's to uh, apply them uh, uh, permissions, it'll always be within these boundaries. Then you have service control policies, and these are organization-wide policies. So if you have a policy where you don't want anyone to run anything in the Canada region, you can apply that policy at the organizational level and it will be enforced. Then within an IAM policy, there are the concept of conditions. And so these are all the kind of like uh, little knobs you can uh, tweak to say, how do I uh, control based on a bunch of different factors? So there is source IP, so restrict where the IP address is coming from, a requested region, so uh, restrict based on the region as we were just mentioned as an example, uh, multi-factor auth presence, so restrict if MFA is turned off, uh, current time, so restrict access based on time of day. Maybe you know, your employees should never be really using things at night, and so that could be an indicator that someone is doing something malicious. So you know, only give them access during a certain time of day, and so that's where we're going to figure out, you know, based on all these type of controls, security controls uh, to our AWS resources, we can kind of enforce the zero trust model on AWS. AWS does not have a ready to use identity controls that are intelligent which is why AWS is considered not to have a zero trust offering for customers and third party services need to be used. So what I'm saying is that technically, you know, this checkbox is this thing saying, okay, we can kind of do zero trust on AWS, but the, there's a lot of manual work. And, you know, if I was to say, okay, um, I don't want anyone using this at nighttime, that doesn't really detect, you know what I'm saying? It's not going to say, oh, I think this time is suspicious or malicious. So then restrict access only to these core services and anything outside of the services can't be used. It just can't exactly do that without a lot of uh, work yourself. And that's what I'm talking about here where we have a collection of AWS services that can be set up in an intelligent-ish detection way for identity concerns, but requires expert knowledge. So the way you might do that on AWS is that everything, all the API calls go through AWS CloudTrail. And so what you could do is feed those into Amazon GuardDuty and GuardDuty is an intrusion uh, uh, intrusion detection and protection system. So it could detect suspicious or malicious activity on those CloudTrail logs. And you could follow that up with remediation or you could pass that on to Amazon Detective that could analyze, investigate and quickly identify security issues uh, that it could ingest from GuardDuty. But I'm telling you that this stuff here is not as easy um, for the consumer and so, you, of course, you can do zero trust model, but it's going to take a lot of work here. And there are some limitations, which we'll talk about next here.